Hey yo, welcome to the wonderful world of Hungry Heat. I am not a classically trained chef. What I am is a self-taught home cook. I have studied under several television chefs. I have a PhD in YouTube University and a black belt in Google Food. I love to cook. The only thing I love more than cooking is my wife, the sensational Shelly Eats Steak. Together we host who like to call the Friday Night Feast. Now this happens every Friday night, 6.30 Central. We'll cook up an entree, maybe a couple of snacks. Show y'all how we do it, and we'll spend the rest of the evening just chewing the fat with all our friends in the Hungry Horde. We'd love to have you over for dinner sometime. Thank you all for watching. And today's video is a very special dessert recipe that my wonderful wife has once again, the sweet Shelly, has uh, <laughs> dreamed up for us. So I'm going to turn it over to her, and baby, you tell them what we're going to do. I wouldn't say I dreamed it up. It's nothing new. It this, is new to me. <laughs> I was like, well, Valentine's Day, now, by the time this post, I think Valentine's Day might have already passed. Probably. We're so far um, behind. <laughs> but I was like, oh, you know, it's nice to have, like, a good treat this time of year. So I uh, thought, well, you know, cinnamon rolls. I've been seeing people talk about cinnamon rolls. I was like, well, how can you, like, elevate cinnamon rolls? So we're going to do chocolate pecan cinnamon rolls. That sounds amazing. Yeah, so I know you see a lot of stuff here. It's going to be so easy, y'all. We're just going to use our base fathead dough. So we have several recipes using that. Real, It's just your basic fathead dough. Um, Almond-free. You know, we don't ever use almond on this channel. So it's one and a half cups of one and a half cups mozzarella two tablespoons of cream cheese, a third a cup of coconut flour. We're gonna mix that together and how we're gonna put in the chocolate and make the cinnamon dough um, extra yummy is we're gonna add unsweetened cocoa. I've got the um, gouter, um, but anyways, un any unsweetened cocoa will do. We're gonna add that. We're also going to add a little bit of, um, I've got allulose here, any sweetener you want, to your lightness. Uh, we don't like things like overly sweet, and I feel like we're going to do the classic kind of cinnamon bond cream cheese frosting on these. That was always, whenever I had cinnamon rolls, that was my go-to. I like the cream cheese frosting. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so I don't want the cinnamon roll itself to be too overly sweet because that frosting is going to be really sweet, y'all. So we're going to do the cocoa powder and, uh, of course, we're going to need some vanilla paste or vanilla extract, which we get from Sarah or Bluegrass Girl. She makes them keto-friendly for us. And we're just going to put this together, roll it out, um, the filling, which is traditionally uh, brown sugar, so we're going to use our Swerve, which is a brown sugar replacement, cinnamon, of course, and the pecans, and you want nice uh, diced or chopped up pecans. That's going to be our filling. This is going to be so good, so easy. We're actually going to put it in a cast iron skillet because oh, nice. I just feel like that makes any kind of bait bread better when it's lined in a cast iron yes, skillet. Oh show. But it's gonna be wonderful. I can't wait to eat this y'all. This will be actually my first meal today so I'm really excited about that. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's we're gonna go. Yeah. First I'm gonna start making the fat head dough so y'all will see us putting the fat head dough together. So I've got my dough done. Let's over here a little bit off camera. I've got some uh, plastic wrap. I'm just gonna lightly spray it with some coconut oil just so it doesn't stick. And then I'm gonna take my chocolate dough, y'all. I'm gonna kinda put this in the center. Look, doesn't that have just a lovely color to it? Now I'm gonna tell you, because I only did one tablespoon of that allulose so it doesn't add a lot of sweetness to me it's more of a hint but that's what I want I don't want it too sweet because again the filling is going to be made with the brown swerve and then the cream cheese frosting I feel like all of that is going to add a lot of sweetness so I don't want to overdo it 
So we want to get this in a nice rectangular. So how I roll up here, trying to get that. I roll this out. Nice little rectangle going. Look at that. My, I normally have like a silicon sheet, but it is actually dirty right now. So, just doing the best with what we got. And you do want it fairly thin because we're going to be rolling these up, right? So you don't want it too thick. So let's see here. Let's make some adjustments. And that's the good thing about, you know, this dough. And you can just repurpose where you're going to, like this side is really a little too much there. I'm just going to fold it in, try to make that more of a square. And I like this part. I'm going to put it right there. Just try to get it as even as possible. So like this part, I'm going to break off and kind of put it here so it can roll out a little more even. The only thing is with the fat head dough, you do have to work rather quickly because you don't want it to cool down too much. Okay. Let's kind of roll that out. Whoops. And that should pretty much do it. And then just kind of figure out the longest side that's going to be the side we're going to roll up so I think this is longer I'm going to put this over here I'll need that eventually I'm just going to put it right here but I don't want to waste that because I'm going to need that later so this looks pretty good so for our filling I'm going to do two tablespoons of the brown Swerve, that's the brown sugar alternative. Swerve is the brand, but any brown Swerve or brown sugar alternative that you want is gonna work great. So two of the brown Swerve, and then I'm gonna do a nice heaping of cinnamon. I mean, it is a cinnamon roll, right? And then I'm gonna do probably a teaspoon, well, no, let's do a half teaspoon of the nutmeg in that. And then finally, I want, it's an ounce of pecans, y'all. An ounce wouldn't fit in this whole thing, so I had to use a little one. But that's one ounce of chopped or diced pecans. And then I just want to really mix this in together. So I'm just going to start mixing that. And this is going to be that filling. So I want to make sure that, especially with the brown swerve, that it, uh, thank you, my sous chef is behind the camera right now. Say hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, so you got me a proper spoon. But um, you want to mix everything so that the brown swerve, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, all of that is, and the pecans, of course are nice and mixed together. And so pecans is actually a nut that he can have because pecans are a real nut. So if you didn't know, uh, peanuts are actually considered a legume and not a nut. So that's why a lot of people have issues with pecans is because they're a legume. So typically if you do have like a peanut allergy or whatever. Like I know there's some flowers called like lupid flower that is considered keto friendly, but that is a legume. So we wouldn't chance that either because we don't want, you know, another episode of 
A flare-up. A flare-up, right. Cause that, so far we've found the only ones that are good for me is pecans and walnuts. Because they're true nuts. Now we also say he has an almond allergy because almonds are high in what's called lectins. And lectins are um, something that can be bad for the nervous system. And so since he has multiple sclerosis, which is a nervous disorder, it attacks the myelin sheath of the nerves. Well, we don't want to ingest something that can also be against the nerves as well, right? Which is what lectins can do. Okay, so I feel like that is well combined. Doesn't that look good, y'all? Look at that. Let's show them in the front of closer. I'll hold yeah. it. Yeah. I don't want to drop it though. <laughs> That's going to be our filling, y'all. It's awesome. So, what I want to start with, yeah, I'll take the spoon, is on our chocolate dough. I got really soft, soft, soft butter. I'm gonna start with a tablespoon and just see. And I basically wanna have a nice schmear, as Heath would say. It's a technical term. Oh yeah, definitely. A nice schmear of butter. And what this will do is it'll help that filling really um, grab hold in this. And then plus, butter makes everything better, right? Yes, Paula. <laughs> and um, and a good, this is a really nice high fat dessert. So like I put in all of the macros and the thing. So I'll post it below. But again, I the reason we don't really post macros here, because I know people will ask, because there's so many variables. Like we're using the certain brand of sweetener. If you're using a different brand, it's going to have a different um, macro count. And, uh, you know, if you're decide to change up the nut, if you're doing a different, uh, cocoa powder, you know, all those things can change it. So I always tell everybody, and this is what I do anytime I home make something, if you're using a tracking app, then I will put in the tracking app, um, I'll just scan each item and just make a recipe. And, uh, oh, that looks good. So, yeah, looks like I used basically half a stick, which is kind of what I planned on because we're going to need the other half of that for our frosting, which, let's be honest, the frosting I felt was always the absolute best part. Like, just give me a cup of frosty, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm... Going to hand that or here you want me just to put it in this bowl or okay so that looks really good right so now I'm going to start the filling now I like to be very generous with my filling because I like to have a nice flavor y'all and we're going to be rolling this up so kind of keep that in mind if it's not all the way to the edge, that's fine, because when you roll it up, it's gonna go there. Look at that. Because I just wanna make sure every cinnamon roll has a good flavor, good amount of the filling. Go back in when I see these little ball spots. Okay, so here is, I would say, the most challenging part, and that's rolling this up. So we're going to, and that's why you want to keep this uh, plastic wrap. I'm going to turn it over, kind of smooth it in, pull it back, and you're going to kind of do this like tuck, tuck and roll. We learned that in uh, elementary school, right? Let's keep doing that. Kind of tuck it in there. You want it kind of tight. I don't like my cinnamon rolls to be real loose. 
and just adjust as needed. And you just kind of keep rolling it. Look at that, y'all. Impressive. Right? And it should. Oops. There we go. And I feel like I got a little butter on the this. Well, it's fine. So there's Don't that. waste my butter. Right? And I'm just going to kind of tuck this edge in and then um, we're going to slice these up and I need to get the skillet or the cast iron that we're going to cook it in. I'm going to use the same pastry knife because it's got a sharp edge and I'm just going to slice these. Now the ends aren't always the prettiest so I'm going to put that one in the middle here. That's fine. It's not going to be pretty, but probably about an inch, inch and a half. So I use my thumb right here as an inch or right here. That's, that should be about an inch. So try to make them all even. And then we do want to go ahead and preheat our oven. And we want to preheat it at 350. And then we'll end up baking these for about 20 minutes. Ooh, I just love the color of this. Like what turned out such a beautiful chocolate color, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. So let's see here. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven out of this roll. All right. Let's kind of be gentle with it. Right there. Ooh, look at that. And I just kind of like make a more of a little circle as I put them in there. And some of that filling is going to come out. That's okay. And just keep them in there and here's that last one so we're going to put these side by side here the little end pieces and look I've got all this on here I ain't gonna waste nothing y'all know that so scoop and dump right Okay, perfect. So we're going to put this in the oven uh, for 20 minutes, and then we'll check on them and see if they need to go a little bit longer. And then in the meantime, we're going to get started on the actual um, frosty. Got my mixture, y'all. It's time for that wonderful frosty. So I have a half a stick of softened butter. I'm just going to put this whole thing in here. And I always scrape all of it off of the uh, wrapper itself. All right, and then put there. And then we need four ounces of cream cheese. Woo! Want it to go? 
out on me here. So put that in there. And also the cream cheese should be softened as well. And then a couple other things we need for this frosting. I'm gonna need about a teaspoon of lemon juice. There we go. And of course, our amazing vanilla paste. Well, it's not ours, it's from Sarah. And I'm gonna do a teaspoon of that, and that does add some sweetener as well. I'm just gonna let that kind of drain off there. All right, let's kind of make sure all of that's off or as much as possible. I'm gonna start whipping this together and then I've got confectioner's sugar. Well, you know, it's the Swerve brand. We don't use real sugar here. I think there's just a tablespoon left of this. Yeah, so I'll probably add some allulose as well. Oh, okay, yeah, that's even better. So he got me scissors, you know, when it gets really low. So, go ahead and dump. That's just like a tablespoon. But I'll probably use some allulose that I have here as well just to really get this sweet. But I'm going to taste it as we go. So, it's going to get a little loud here for a second, y'all. So I'm helping the best way I know how and just staying out of the way. And you just want to get that whipped up. So let's just see here. Use your pastry knife to empty the whisk. Let's do this. And then we'll also take a little taster of it, right? And I like to scrape like the sides down. And you just want to get it to where it's nice and fluffy. Now the thing is, I don't want this like thin because when I put it on those cinnamon rolls, those hot cinnamon rolls are going to kind of melt this. Oh, I think that's good. And uh, my sous chef was here. He could have a little taster. What I don't do know, think? I need a bigger bite than I know for sure. Oh my gosh. Sweet enough or... That's you, amazing, actually. Do you want more sweetener? No, I like it just the way it is. I don't want it too sweet. Mm-hmm. You get a little bit of that citrus. I'm just going to whip it another second. Look, what do y'all think of my KitchenAid? Isn't it so cute? A long time ago, I really loved pink and I was gonna do my whole kitchen in pink. And so my mother and grandmother, I've been asking for a KitchenAid mixer like every Christmas for five years. And finally, one Christmas, they went in on it and got me this KitchenAid mixer. And then I added these little stickers I found off of Amazon. I just thought it was so cute. Potion Master, a little cauldron. I just thought, oh, that's so me. Look, like I'm, I'm creating wonderful magic here, right? Okay, let's see. Ooh, yeah, this is looking a lot fluffier, y'all. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. See, nice. And I'm just going to have a little taste. It's just him and I, so 
you know, if you're making this for a potluck or something, then, you know, you want to be a little less. But we work at home, so our potluck is Heath and I. Yeah, I think that's perfect. And uh, we've got about 10 more minutes left of those cinnamon rolls. And then we'll show you topping it with this yes. wonderful stuff. I know, that's the best part, y'all. And that's it. So we're all done with this. And I can't wait to try it, y'all. We'll see you in a minute. So I'm just keeping an eye on things to make sure nothing goes awry. <laughs> so it ended up baking for 30 minutes, y'all. So just kind of keep that. I said 20, but it is going to depend on your oven. So we did uh, 30. And you can see how they did kind of uh, spread a little bit, which is, you know, it had room in the skillet. So if you used a smaller skillet, then they probably wouldn't spread as much. So here I've got the frosting, and these have probably sat out of the oven, what, about five minutes or so? At least. Yeah, so you can set them out longer, and um, that'll... Well, I really like this, that you're doing it while it's hot, and it's going to melt that down. Yes. So I'm just putting, basically, a... a dollop. A dollop. A dollop of cream cheese. And yeah, so that's the that's why I said this cream cheese is rather thick... It's icing. Yes, this icing is rather thick, and which is fine because I'm putting it on these hot cinnamon rolls so that it will actually start spreading a little bit. That's This is the kind of icing I like. Um, I did see other people, they would do one where it was just kind of a uh, heavy cream type, and I just felt like... It made it spread. It was too liquidy. And I just like a nice... It's like a gravy. <laughs> right. And I like frosting to be really thick and gooey and ooey on top. I don't want it to be uh, real watery, right? I want to be able to see that frosting. Here, this one. We had one that we were just kind of testing. So it kind of got a little... Uh, Lops it, yeah, because I wanted to make sure it was all the way done. It was a sacrifice. Yeah, for the greater good. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I get all of this yummy, yummy frosty. I feel like somebody's been eating my frosty. I don't know who would do that. Mm-hmm. Probably Sam. Sam yes. lies, right? Yes. Yes, that's that. bad boy. To be like, what did I do? Learn to love it, kid. <laughs> uh -huh. Here, do you want to lick that one too? Yes, please. Yes, chef. Now you could use one of those like rubber spatulas and really get in here and get all of that. We might go back and do that. So now that they've been on here a minute. I'm just going to kind of spread the frosting out, make sure it kind of gets in all the little nooks and crannies. Yes. I know. That is the best. Oh, that's so good. Right. And of course, we've got a little bit of sausage to go with this to make it a, a whole meal. Or you could just have, you know, one of these. Make that a dessert. Yeah. I'm really excited about this, y'all. This looks so good. And honestly, I mean, it might sound odd, and I'm not trying to do this as a put down or anything like that, but it kind of looks like those, the, I remember back in the day, pre keto stuff, we'd make the Grand's Biscuits oh. uh, cinnamon rolls. You, you come in the pan, in the can, and this looks like that. Yeah, it does kind of, right? It look, turned out almost identical to that. And she did this all from scratch, y'all. I'm just still so amazed by that. <laughs> she's, a, she's an amazing cook. Mm, thank you. I cook with love, and I think when you cook from love, things generally turn out much better, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to kind of finish smoothing out this frosting here, you guys. And then we're going to take a couple more pictures. So we here. took some before it was all, uh, frosted, and then we're going to take a few more after. Yeah. 
Mm, this looks so good, y'all. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. And then you could serve these hot and fresh, or, you know, if you're, like, serving to a group of people, serve them in this cast iron, and then as they cool, then also this frosting's going to cool as well and kind of solidify. So it's like and a win. Kind of harden. Yeah. Right. And so then it's even a win-win because it's like smoothed on here. Oh my gosh. I don't know if we're going to be able to let ours sit that long. I may eat that whole pan. <laughs> that looks so good. All right. Let's get them served up and take some photos. Wow. Y'all, let's go in. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's how tender it is. Mm. Mm. That frosting, you guys. You nailed it. Mmm. That's muddy. What do you think? Well, he always takes a bite when I ask the question. The dough, it's good. Yet, yeah, it's not overly chocolate, but it has a good cocoa mm -hmm. note to it. You definitely get the pecans and the cinnamon. To me, it's plenty sp sweet, especially with the frosting on it. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, what do you think of the consistency of the dough? Good and bad. Okay. It's excellent the way it tastes. Only wish, only thing I wish it was, it was a little taller. Mm. But it is homemade, and they're gonna. It's gonna be what's gonna be. I think. If you they were to get taller, you would have to use a much smaller pan uh -huh. so that as soon as you put them in uncooked, that they're really butt up against each other. And that would probably help it get a little bit taller, but they're not going to... I cut them about an inch, inch and a quarter, so they're not going to be real tall. So you could get them taller if you cut them wider. Oh, so maybe okay. a two inch... And that would be, you know, wider in the pan, but you would need a much smaller pan and you wouldn't get as many. And does it really matter, honestly, thinking about it now? If I wanted just more, then I just get a couple more of these. Well, just depends on how you want to present it. All right. I want it with the sauce. Let's try that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You nailed it again. <laughs> It is, like, so good. Like, to me, I mean, if you didn't know better, say we were on a cruise ship and you ordered this, would you think it was keto? Not at all. Not at all. Right. Well, I would probably notice that it's not... As sweet. Yeah, because um, not true. keto things, because y'all probably have noticed this. The longer you've been keto... Like, the more your taste buds awaken, and so when you try something, that's why we don't need stuff as sweet, because cream cheese becomes sweet. Heavy cream has a sweet note to it. Even pork sometimes will taste sweet to me. But I think when you are on the sad, because y'all know, go through the grocery store, like, everything has some type of sugar in it, whether mm -hmm. it's honey, brown sugar, Regular sugar, corn syrup, dextrose, maltodextrose, or a combination of all of those. Even freaking seasonings have it. So it's like you're inundated with so much sugar in one form or another in every single item that they have to up, 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 up the sugar for people to like it even more. You know, because it's, you're, you begin to become like dull to the flavors of stuff because... They have to keep up in the sugar. So I feel like when you try something that isn't keto, it is ultra sweet. Whereas this, I feel like I, it's the right amount of sweetness. Like mm -hmm. to me, it's not going to be like, oh, my teeth ate kind of thing. It's a nice, to, I, would, I guess I would say it's a good level of sweetness where I'm not going to feel like, ooh. Is my, yeah, is my blood sugar going to go up from tasting something this sweet? Ooh. Um, but it, it does feel that if you're wanting something sweet, to me, this is a good thing. Especially so like for breakfast. Too. So what? Flaky. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. 
Oh. You've always been an awesome baker. Oh, thank you. But it's definitely got the layers in there. Mm -hmm. I know it's kind of hard to tell from some of the pictures, but it, it definitely has the layers like you would know in a traditional cinnamon roll. I love the addition of the nuts in it. Yes. Gives it a nice, another texture to it. Overall, I'm really impressed with these. I am too. We're making these again soon. <laughs> well, I hope everybody else loved this recipe as well. Um, if you've made it to this point, go ahead and comment. Cinnamon roll. <laughs> okay. And then, if you're new here, give us a thumbs up. Or everybody, give us a thumbs up. That Make sure you click that channel. subscribe button. Yeah. If you're new, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when we put out recipes. And then don't forget... Every Friday night, 6.30 Central, we'll go live for the Friday night feast. We'll cook up an entree, make a couple little snacks, show you all how we do it, and then we spend the rest of the evening just chewing the fat with all of our friends in the Hungry Horde. Hope you can tune in sometime. We'd love to have you over for dinner. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. And stay tuned to see all of our wonderful channel members that allow us to put out wonderful content like this. Thank you all so much. Bye. Bye. I'm going to eat my cinder roll. You know I'm filming you, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> For heat after dark. <laughs>